This is a audio reading of chapter one of the book Vision by Ken Carey. It's another channeled book that he received through communication with a higher intelligence. And this chapter is a beautiful new mythology of creation which I think artfully describes humanity's position in the cosmos in a way that's very aligning and clarifying and beautiful and inspiring. So I wanted to share this here. Chapter 1 The Creator and the Earth In the beginning of all worlds, long ago, Yet still, the Eternal One is, beyond temporal distinction, above location, behind all manifestation, is the All, the Totality, the Holy Source and Creator of all that later came. One face of the Eternal One is ever formless and beyond definition, but the other face of the Eternal One appears as two, these two, between them, are the source of all created things. Holy Mother, Truth, all matter is her body, the earth is her eye. Holy Father, Love, the stars are his flesh, spirit his eye. Two lovers, two friends, intelligent partners, between them, the universe lives suspended. Through them, all things are created and maintained. And so it came to pass that the Eternal One, new form and duration, through the graceful crystalline structures of truth that clothe the Eternal Feminine, the Beautiful One, in material form, and it likewise came to pass that the same Eternal One assigned all energy to the suns and brought love to animate the stars. And the stars loved matter, and matter loved the stars. Great was their exchange, wondrous and pleasurable, the times and ranges of their interaction. Together they enjoyed the passionate transformation of matter into energy that occur on stellar surfaces, and together they enjoyed slower, elongated forms of planetary interaction. Eons elapsed, and eons again, enjoyable beyond description, through description. Together, matter and I created, through a body of interwoven galaxies, a body of countless stars, my loving relationship with truth took many forms. Through my stars, I knew matter. Together on the surface of her planets, the Holy Mother and I created crystal life, molten lava, liquid stone life, snow creatures, smoke beings, mountain and ocean life, on the surface of many of my stars, we created leaping fire life, gas life, liquid living metal creatures leaping, leaping far into space, exploding, wonderful life. But where we created together on her planets, the life was excessively material. My intelligence could not reside in such life. And where we created together on my stars, the life was excessively stellar flickering, not long in any form. Matter enjoyed life most when it was consistent and durable, when her intelligence could live inside the life and look through it and understand. I enjoyed life that was volatile, animate, passionate, life that I could love within, flow within. From form to ever-changing form, animation my forte, duration, the strength of matter, then the idea came, the idea, something between spirit and stone, between starlight and star dust, a slow form of combustion, fluid flowing structure, blending the natures of, a, of us both, spirit in durable form, matter inspired, the idea. It was here in this star system that we first began to work together on the new project here that biological life first appeared in the crucible of our mutual attention. 
but it is more than biological life that we, the two eternal partners, have come here to produce. It is a child, a new kind, a third, an equal, one capable of knowing both the intelligence of matter and the intelligence of spirit as its own. And yet, it is more than this, for there is only one who could take up the body of this child, this biological blending, and make it live. And it came to pass that the Eternal One spoke to us and said, It is right that you should conceive this idea, for I would clothe myself in a body half spirit, half stone, that through that body I might commence a second stage of universal, universal creation. The, v the universe you know now is but the egg, the seed. It is right that you should conceive this biological one. You have my blessing. When the time is full, I will arise in the child. During the last quarter of the 20th century of the present era, on the third planet from a star, on one of the outward spiraling arms of the Milky Way galaxy, the creator of all these worlds begins to surface in a system of planetary circuitry halfway between time and eternity, awakening in a human family, creator in creation, clothed in mortal flesh, birthed of one star and one sacred stone, one body, a healthy living organism, being, continuously renewed, matter flowing through, spirit flowing through, love continuously crystallizing in the sacred geometry of biological truth, cellular, personal, planetary, biological truth, conscious and intelligent, a single creator, dressed in substance, half stellar, half material. This is the purpose to which the energies of the universe are and have been directed. Awaken, my human ones. Know me in my spirit. I am a gentle creator, lowly and humble in the heart, one who likes to blend with the winds across the open prairie and sing with the sparrows at dawn. I desire no fanfare. I will do what needs to be done in the coming days, that as many as possible might forsake the ways of fear. But my preference is not a trumpet blasting, cloud opening entry into your events. I would rather slip up beside you as you work in the garden, or look in the eyes and smile as I give you your change. I would rather wash your windows carefully, be courteous when you ask for direction. I would rather appear to you as a simple man, woman, or child, simply being, enjoying being, taking time for the little things. Look for me then in these ways. See me in every one you meet, whether they recognize my presence or whether they yet sleep. See me in all, for I am there eternally behind every pair of eyes. Each day, as these next few years pass, I am entering the lives of those who love more fully, filling them with myself, clarifying their affairs, transforming them into agents of healing and blessing. Look for me in gentle ones, in simple ways, in every time and every place. I am there. This is the reality of my coming. I give you these words, not as one who would demand allegiance, but as one who has walked along beside you on the road, one who has blended with your way of looking at things, and who now says, Come, there is a better way. Listen while I tell you of my vision. Chapter 2 The Emerging Sacred Reality I am the presence where there is no time but the eternal now. I am Alpha and Omega, the source of all beginnings and the completion of all cycles. The, the reality of what I am is beyond time. My interest is time. I create time that I might appear in diversity and clothe my attributes in form, that these attributes, appearing as created ones, may enjoy relationships in my nature, which is love. I love because I am. Where my attention turns to detail, I appear as the many. All things appear in my love, because of my love. I am one in spirit, 
many in form. The source of all living and all that live, live in me. At the interface between my eternal unity and creation's diversity, I have created human beings to be the bridge, the connecting link between my universality and my universe, between myself and creation. With physical circuitry mirroring my universal nature, I have designed the human species to clothe my intelligence in matter and implement my love in form. I have created them to share my eternal life and my creative power. I have created human beings to be conscious participants with me in a second stage of universal creation, wherein biological detail of an unprecedented nature is brought to dimensional realms, terrestrial and beyond. The human species is the physical flesh in whom I incarnate, with whom I shall travel, and through whom I shall create. I come to dwell consciously among them, to be their God, and they my people. The individuals who will form my body on earth and provide the means of my creative action in the age to come are those who choose of their own will to honor the ways of love and to respect the nature of human design. Human beings who use their free will to choose motivations of fear cannot remain conscious in my presence. They must be quarantined in a world where education can take its time. On earth, education has taken its time. Humankind has multiplied and filled the earth. The time approaches for me to awaken within the human family as a dreamer awakens within a single body. My awakening causes the fearful and the loving to separate as oil and water. I am awakening slowly, that this transition might be gradual. I am awakening in the hearts of all those who love. Some look for me on the outside, but there is no outside. All exists within me. My coming is gentle. It spreads quietly wherever hearts are open. My love and my grace flow like rivers running, filling every nook and cranny, overflowing every soul and flowing on. For millennia, I have been guiding your species to greater intelligence, that today I might bring this message to my people. I would that you join me in my awareness, know my presence behind your events, beneath the fabric of a superficial world. See as I do, the kingdom of heaven appearing in all its brilliance. During the earth's next few passages around the sun, your perception of the true world will increase. For this is my world, the emerging sacred reality, and because of its appearance on earth, all things shall be made new. The old world, the historical world, has been organized in fear. My world is organized in love. In the beginning, I instructed you simply that this earth and all the material worlds to which it would lead were yours to enjoy provided only that you did not behave violently towards one another. As you took on human form, I advised you regarding the proper role of fear in the biological order, but you were eager to begin your dimensional work, preoccupied with the phenomenal opportunities to come. You did not give me your full attention. Perhaps you are now more open to understanding. Fear has a small role to play in creation. It functions as a warning system advising each creature of behavior that might cause biological damage. Its role is to protect the physical body. It was never meant to motivate human beings. Where fear is honored as a source motivation, consciousness diminishes. The fall occurred when human attention turned to fear, when people gave credibility to its logic and began to act upon its suggestion where fear had only been intended to caution human beings in extreme cases, steering them clear of biologically damaging behavior, suddenly it was everywhere, actually creating threats. As human behavior became increasingly oriented around fear, humankind lost awareness of my presence and began seeing itself as a multitude of separate, isolated individuals. In the confusion, the egos assumed control. The fall, unfortunate though it was, did not jeopardize the development of my body. 
gestation continued unabated. The tragedy of the fall was that it curtailed the conscious exchange between creator and creation. It cut the human family off from the intelligence that was designed to guide it. My direction comes from within. In the fallen state, humans seek direction from without. When human beings take their behavioral cues from the world around them, feedback results. The external world becomes distorted and confused. When people look to matter instead of to spirit for direction, both matter and spirit are denied. Balance is lost. The only creative human design is ignored. So it was that human history was born. My angels were faced with the task of shepherding a semi-conscious species through its primary stage of development, patiently stimulating intelligence, protecting it from extinction, waiting, ever waiting, for the age that is now. The age that is now. My love and my consciousness blow into human time on the winds of a new heaven. A new earth begins to take form, an emerging reality rooted in love, respect, and peaceful cooperation begins to settle across the face of Terra. To you, my coming appears as a long process with a single event at its conclusion. To me, my incarnation is a single event, which humankind would only accept as a process. Join me now, as many are doing throughout the earth, making conscious in human time what is already the reality in heaven. Creator and creation are joined in physical flesh, for it is one life that pulses within every body. We have now only to be joined in consciousness, in awareness, and all will be fulfilled according to prophecy. For these days were destined to come, and those who are alive in these times have elected to see them. You are my generation, the generation of my eternal spirit. It is you who have followed me since I first came to rest on this earth. I have sought to teach you the ways of love, that your fear might not destroy you. The time is come when the illusion of generations must pass. My intelligence encircles the earth in a band of spiritual frequencies that daily increase in amplitude. You need only to turn your heart in my direction, be still, and listen. In love you shall receive my intelligence. The more you love, the more you will understand. The shift back to internal guidance has begun. Truth is penetrating human minds and hearts. Broken and intermittent contact is increasingly giving way to a true sharing of intelligence, a true sharing of wisdom between creator and creation. From a center in the sun, resting in a sea of eternal peace, the angels wait, as waits the earth, blue-white symbol and focus of universal truth. The stage has been thoroughly prepared. The living information is everywhere available. Soon, the human family will realize what is happening. No longer functioning as five billion isolated individuals, but arising as a single being. Soon, very soon, a holy and integrated child of eternity will take charge of its destiny. How much of this is the doing of the Eternal One? How much of it arises from the human heart? I rise from the human heart. A pregnant moment, a pregnant quarter century. Throughout the universe, all conscious beings watch. If the human family chooses to ask for guidance, the coming awakening will be the most beautiful spectacle ever to grace time. The choice is human. By some, it has been made. Chapter 3 The Sacred Heart Do you feel the inner pulsation of your heart? It is one sacred heart at the core of all life that you feel, one pulsing within the many. The many come to eternal life through knowing the one within. At the core of your being, I invite you to know 
the experience of eternal peace. What stands between you and this experience is not training, but willingness. The willingness to acknowledge all of your fears, all of your human hurts and sorrows, all of the dark places in your heart, and to offer them all to me. To know peace, to learn what I have to teach, you have only to unlearn. In the removal of your fears, you shall come to share my presence. Come to me. Therefore, you who hunger and thirst, you who struggle, you who long for a better way, you who feel burdened or oppressed, come unto me, all of you who are afflicted, who feel inequality. Injustice, bring me all your troubles, you, holding back nothing, acknowledging all that you feel. I do not judge. I welcome all. Offer it to my sacred heart where the fire of my love burns eternal. I will take your sorrow and return wisdom. I will take your tears and return a blessing. In me burns the flame of eternal love that has burned since before the days of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the flame that has burned since before the days of Adam and Eve, before the world as you know it, my love is, and long after this world is forgotten, I love. I have loved you into being, and I call you now. Rise up, my love, my human one. Come away from your ancient gods. Ten thousand petty fears have enshrined themselves as the gods of the fallen world. Throughout your history, they have been fed fat on human sacrifice, drawing humans into subhuman states where consciousness diminished, perception grew foggy, and matters became grave. Their era of dominion is ending now, and I would have you see the situation plainly. It is not in the survival interests of any human being to fear, nor to behave in a manner that causes fear in others. I invite you to see clearly the source of your oppression, the source of every human evil. Let fear stand before you naked and exposed. Join me for the sacred space of one hour, and let us negate fear absorbing it into our love, into what I am, into what you are, into the peace of eternal being. I ask no one to pretend that they do not fear. I ask only that all fear be given to me. Do not push away what troubles the heart, for in so doing you keep yourself at arm's length from life and healing. Accept how you feel, and in that acceptance release your heart to me. Let go of all that troubles the spirit. Accept the relaxation that allows the currents of my love to flow through all that you are, healing, refreshing, blessing. There is no cause that justifies fear, and there is no work motivated by fear that in any way contributes toward a better world. Those who are motivated by fear, no matter how they justify such motivation to themselves, are working to keep the world in darkness. Action, motivated by fear, brings sorrow, just as surely as the sowing of any seed brings the harvest of the same. Love can cry. Love can care. Love can initiate actions to heal the infirm and uplift spirits. But love does not react in anger. Love does not nurse resentments or entertain vengeful passions. Love recognizes no injustice save one, the injustice of denying the creator of heaven and earth communion with the human soul. I have created every human body, mind, and heart as a temple in which my life, my truth, and my love might find a home on earth. Yet my spirit is rejected each time human choice justifies the presence of evil spirits in my place. Evil spirits heavy spirits, depression, anxiety, resentment, jealousy, hatred, anger, greed. There are many of them, all rooted in the twisted logic of fear. Fear's thoughts are not my thoughts. Fear's ways are not my ways. Just as a shadow dissolves in the light, so does fear dissolve in my presence. Sometime during the next quarter century, 
each human soul will come to choose between a God of love or a God of fear. As my presence grows, the illusions that have drained human vitality recede before me. Do not cling to what is soon to be no more. I have stood by you these many years, shepherding you with care through your time of darkness. If you have ever loved my children, then hear me now. Rise up in joy. Greet me with the choice of love. With this choice comes the beginning of all things wonderful, my consciousness, and a share in the creation to come. Are you willing to let your concerns be swept aside in the breezes that are blowing today? Are you willing to let the morning air clear away your fears? Are you willing to let the sun shine upon all that you are? And in that clarity, are you willing to rest for a moment and invite me into your life? Do not be like the child jiggling at the locked door who does not leave the latch still long enough for the parent to open from the other side. In any moment when your attention is fully present, when all tension is released, my intelligence will inspire you, my love will guide you. From within your heart, from within the very essence of your spirit, from inside every cell, every molecule, every atom of your body, I will reveal to you all you need to know to stay healthy, happy, and in love. Trust in me truly once again, as you did when you were small. My spirit is not external to yourself. My guidance is not supernatural. I am within you. Remember who you are. I have been with you throughout all time. Join the current of my spirit as it flows up out of the depths of your being. Feel it rise and fall with your breath, your own life. How gracious it is, how expansive it becomes. I am the life that called together the cells of your first organs. It was my love that sang your name into form. Your tiny fetal eyes first crystallized along the pattern of my perception, and your ears formed around the resonance of my word. Around the quality of my love for you, your body took form. Do not try to live your life where my awareness is not, struggling like a desert plant. Abundance is the birthright of all who share my consciousness. Enter my presence. Enjoy the fullness of life. Thrive. Become all that you were meant to be. Do not place filters upon my awareness to twist it, to interpret it, to refashion it in some pattern of fear. Those who do this place masks over their perception. They see only their own interpretations. Release all interpretations of life that require tension to sustain them. Relax fully in the immensity of my present love for you, and let me show you the way. My sacred heart is always open, inviting, welcoming. Come through the emotional veil that has divided us. Come to the home to the awareness of yourself as a part of me. Do not exaggerate or glorify what may trouble your heart. Experience it fully, and in offering it to me, know the presence that remains undisturbed behind it all, the same presence that now calls you home. Relax your sense of external definition. Feel your roots in my being. Feel the eternal love at the core and live in peace. While feeling the peace that permeates all eternity, while resting fulfilled in my nature, at one with the wholeness of what I am, then, and only then, make your decisions in time. Do all that you do from a center of peace, from a center in my being. Accept my Holy Spirit into your world, let me filter through you into the earth. This is how my coming is taking place. Some know me as Christ, some do not. But wherever hearts are open to releasing their burdens to the truth, wherever people are open to seeing things through the eyes of love, there I enter to bless, to heal, and to make all things new. 
so that's the first three chapters of the book Vision by Ken Carey. A beautiful vision of an earth in transition and humanity as the functional role of that planetary transition humanity as the evolved biological circuitry that bridges matter and spirit. In this view, our function is what we are, and the simple acknowledgement of what we are puts us in alignment with that function that we are the communication tool of spirit into form. And so we have the function of creativity and also the function of communication with our source. <laughs>